great walk-on music. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us. I'm delighted to be able to present to you the TV Hack Day at Show and Tell, which I know you've been eagerly awaiting here and shown great interest in. My name is Tiffany St. James. I'm one of the strategy board directors for Rewired State, and uh, we have been here for 36 hours making uh, web apps and prototypes to be able to uh, share with you today. Can I just have a show of hands? Who's been to a hack day show and tell before? Okay, a good number of you, but there's still a good number who haven't. So essentially what we mean by hacking is getting some incredibly bright programmers, developers, coders together with specific skill sets. We've been working with TV data to be able to share with you the things that they have made in just 36 hours along the theme of making TV more sociable. I have able judging panel here to be able uh, to support us here today. I'm delighted our head judge and um, uh, head of jury is Louisa Heinrich, Group Director of Strategy for Fjord. Thank you very much, Louisa. And Joe uh, McDermottro, <laughs> who's the YouTube Program Development Specialist at Google. So welcome, Joe. Thank you very much. And Philippe de Boisboise the president and co-founder of Machinima. So thank you very much. We'll be, our, our judges will be judging um, outside of this, which will be shared tonight at the party at the Martinez Hotel. Um, so they'll be looking very closely. We're going to run through 12 um, hacks that have been made for you. There's going to be a break halfway through for the judges, and the judges only maybe just five quick minutes of questions. And then the uh, second half, another five quick minutes of questions. Uh, any questions you might have or any interest you might have, um, we've been running uh, a, a, a chat and a channel on m the MIPCube hashtag as well as the MIPBoatHack hashtag. And I'll share with you uh, the URL where all the presentations will be live at the close um, of this presentation. So they'll be up on the uh, rewordstate.org, um, and I'll share that with you just after this session. So uh, thank you very much for your interest. We're, we've been incredibly grateful for Reed Medem to be able to allow us here today and over the last 36 hours to be able to show you and share with you what agile development can uh, really do. So I want to uh, share with you all of the hacks that have been made um, and then look at what that can mean for us in the work that we do going forward. My uh, first uh, presenter um, is Ar Aral Vulcan. Um, who's going to demonstrate Grab Magic? I'm going to jump on in between and just uh, chat to you while we change over. Please, please bear with us. It's one of the technically more difficult presentations to do with 12 different presentations on different machines. So thank you for your uh, attention and thank you for your interest. Aral. Thank you. Um, apologies for delaying getting started. This is uh, technically quite a convoluted demonstration. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you about Grab Magic. But before I do, I want to start at the beginning. And by that, I mean the very, very beginning, where we all start out um, helpless. Helpless and completely dependent on someone else for everything. Everything. Uh, that we need, we're dependent on somebody else. And, but we start to see that there are other people out there who are not like that, other people who know how the world works. And we start seeing them as super people, as people who can manipulate their environment. They're not just ruled by it. They can do things. They can change the world. And somewhere between puberty and extreme old age, we become those people. We become this guy and this guy. And of course, the female equivalents of these. Um, and <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was a good save, wasn't it? <laughs> Flickr let me down on that one. Um, the only super women poses I could find you don't want to see. Uh, I tried, I did try. Um, and, and you become these people, and you can change the world, you can affect the world around you. And what happens? This happens. Oh my gosh, what is this? Seriously, what are we doing to ourselves? And, and suddenly you're back to being that little helpless person but trapped in the body of a grown-up, right? I mean, really, let's not do this. What is this? Really? I, I don't know what's going on there. Is it a Frisbee? I don't know. Um, you, you know, really? Really? Seriously? No, no, I mean, look at this. What does that even mean? What does that mean? 
three units, two times, mute? Is the weird sa satanic cult? I don't know. Why is this so important? Why am I so passionate about user experience? I'm a user experience designer. Why am I so passionate about it? Think about it. Your life is like the grains of sand inside an hourglass. Each grain is an experience. You have experiences that are waiting to be had, the experience that you're having right now, and experiences that you've had. And the quality of these experiences, whether they're infuriating, because we have emotional reactions to these things, don't we? We get angry. Or whether they're amusing, or whether they're more than that, delightful, they determine the character of your mornings, of your evenings, of your days, your weeks, your months, your years, your lives. Experiences, in other words, matter. And with experiences, we can go far beyond making things that are functional to making things that are delightful. How beautiful is this? As I was eating somewhere and I saw this. You lift the spoon and it opens its lid up for you. How beautiful is that? <laughs> Great design empowers, amuses, and delights. This is how you buy a ticket on the way to the, tra to the uh, airport in Oslo. The, the way you use it, you take your credit card out and you swipe it and you walk on. That's it. On the other side, you swipe your card at the gate, you walk out. How beautiful is that? There is no UI. And sometimes the best UI is no UI. That makes me feel like Superman because I can just walk through. <laughs> wow, how awesome is that? That's what great design can do. Great design can take technology and make it invisible and make the, ex the experience indistinguishable from magic. I call this the Superman effect, and I try to build a little demo of it for you called Grab Magic. So if all the pieces work, uh, I will hopefully be able to show it to you right now. So I'm just switching over. Wow, that worked. That was the hardest bit. OK. So I want you to imagine for a second that what you see over here, I'm going to move over here without slipping and, and falling on things, um, that what you see over here uh, is your TV, right? And it's playing a movie of some sort, and you're at home and you're sitting on your couch, right? And, and you have your phone with you, and on the phone, perhaps, you have an app, and you can see that on that screen. And there's something interesting that's happening. So you're watching this right now, um, and, and you sit, you're in front of your TV, and there's something interesting that's happening. So you kind of wave at your TV, and I hope this works with the Connect did, yes. Uh, you wave at your TV, and, and it recognizes you. It says, hi, hi, how are you? Right? And, and you're looking for something interesting, so let me just wait for a, a nice image that comes up. That's kind of nice. I want it. So I grab it, and then I press on my phone. Right? <laughs> so I'm just taking it from my phone, <laughs> from the screen, onto, onto my phone. And, and that's all I'm doing. And, and that, uh, basically, that is magic, right? Because I'm taking something that's on that screen, and I'm transferring it to my phone. How cool is that? That makes me feel like a super person. That gives me superpowers. And that is what great design can do. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Aral. Thanks very much. So, uh, very lucky to have uh, Aral, an international speaker in his own right on uh, user experience. So, fantastic to hear some of those great stories about uh, great design. Just while the team is setting up and uh, switching over, we have the next uh, app that's coming up in just a second, which is uh, When uh, by Martin Davis. So, uh, Martin Davis, from his self uh, confessed own Twitter bio, is in uh, immersed in VOIP and mobile, um, operates on weirdcreator.com, uh, one of his URLs. But Martin's a very experienced Hack Day producer himself. I think um, he's a veteran at MIP uh, to be able to uh, not only develop, but to be able to contribute to uh, the whole experience. So I'm just letting Martin set up a second. Are you okay? Ready to go? Thank you very much, Martin Davis. Okay, well, if, uh, if Aral was the magician, then I'm definitely the rabbit in the hat. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'd like to present to you what I built this weekend. This was actually a, a hack that I came up with at about three o'clock this morning. Um, <laughs> uh, I've been asleep for about half an hour today, so I apologize if I just fall over. <laughs> um, you know, don't all rush at once to pick me up. <laughs> um, someone else over here will take care of me. Um, so the idea behind this is... Um, 
when you're building hacks, you should really try to think about them from you know, solving a problem that is something that's particular to you, something that can scratch your own itch. And this doesn't necessarily scratch an itch of mine, but it's certainly uh, an application that I know my girlfriend has wanted for some time. Um, and uh, given the fact that I go away to hack day so often, I thought that it was probably about time that I built something uh, specifically with her in mind. And the idea behind it is that we watch a lot of TV at home, we watch a lot of series in bulk, and a lot of people are doing that these days. You've got you know, long episodic programming, 24 episodes that you're getting on DVD, or you're buying from various places and you watch them all one after the other because they're so engaging. And you get to the end and they leave you on that huge cliffhanger and you're like, oh, when's the next series of that coming on? It could be six, eight months, it could be a year from now. Listings information doesn't have anything like that for you. You, you need to know just so you can go and find you know, nine months of stuff to do before the next season of the program that you love so much is. So that is really it. It's super simple. It gives you the, basically, you put in a program. I'll go for one that she particularly likes. I hope this works. Um, and uh, the next season of True Blood, which is a question she asked me just the other day. Starts on the 24th of June. Uh, 2012, and that's it. And if you need a reminder of that, then you can put in your mobile number and it'll text you that as well. Um, but that's it, it's super simple, but it stops me from having to go and dig around on the internet. Now she can go and find out this information for herself, any program she likes, um, whenever she likes. And, uh, and yeah, that's it, super simple, solving just a little problem, scratching a little itch, and that's when. Thank you. Thanks very much, Martin. Thank you very much indeed. Next, we have uh, an app named Nudge Me with a collaborative effort. What was really great at the start of the hack day was the original briefing. Everyone got together and discussed what they might like to build, what they might like to make, what ideas they had, uh, what skill sets they had to be able to come up and make uh, <laughs> hacks today. But um, uh, So some of the guys have got together. So we have, I, I don't know whether you're ready to go. Yeah, 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 we are, yeah. Oh, great. So from Nudge Me, we've got Martin Davis, we've got Sid Lawrence, we've got Marvin Barreto, and we've got Russell Smith, who have all made Nudge Me. Thank you. Well, interestingly, I mean, this started off yesterday, and uh, you might think that it looks a bit crap, and I'm going to explain why after I've explained why we tried to make this. Um, now, this, is, again, is to do with reminders and to do with live TV. Um, people watch are starting to watch more live TV because they can join in the conversation on Twitter, and also they have their conversations in the offices. Um, now, I had, the other day, I was sat on the sofa working away, like I do, with my girlfriend sat on the sofa reading the Kindle, and she said, can you just nudge me at five to nine so that I can watch, uh, I think it was the Big Fat Gypsy Weddings. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that's how exciting <laughs> my life is. Um, and uh, so we then decided that the most simplest thing we could do is come up with some kind of uh, TV guide with a text because there's currently no uh, reminder service. It's ridiculous. It's the most simple thing in the world, yet there isn't anything out uh, that does it. You've got Zbox that uh, is starting, in the, I believe in the next version, will have it. Um, but uh, at the moment, there isn't anything. And so we then decided we would try and build this thing. Um, we were told that Atlas was a great... Uh, a, a very, the go-to place for TV listings. Um, now, we finished this, well, we pretty much finished this yesterday afternoon, uh, and you'll see that the go-to place of TV listings uh, has got lots of gaps uh, in it. Not only does it have gaps, but you'll see that things like the news, uh, actually the title is the date. The <laughs> title isn't news, uh, it's the date. And then you've got episode seven, <laughs> Episode seven of what exactly? Um, I don't even know from the picture. Um, but this is the data that we have to play with. Um, now, as hackers, we quite like playing with data. And there is no data from your industry out there that we can actually play around with. It's... Yeah, I, uh, I th honestly <laughs> think that you should start to change that. Like, we like making stuff. We not, like... Uh, all of us here have tried to come up with some really interesting stuff. And uh, you know what? Most of us have actually struggled, not because the concepts, the concepts we've got, the uh, actual data and being able to make it into something real, 
we can't do because you've got uh, companies uh, charging for TV listings. Now, in my eyes, uh, I would think that TV listings was a good thing to put out there because it would get more people watching your shows. But apparently, you would rather charge people to view the TV listings than make more money from people watching your shows. So um, uh, that's just uh, my point of view from this. Now, I, I can show you this. This works really well. Uh, I mean, you can log into Facebook, and you can actually see which other of your friends uh, have asked for reminders, um, which they would then receive as a text. And we got it all working, and then we plugged in the actual real-life data. And uh, yeah, so that's what we came up with. <laughs> Uh, this is Nudge Me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Theme, a great team effort there. And interesting to be able to share the possibilities here, the possibilities. Now, uh, we got the opportunity to uh, just work with the data that we've had in the room. But if you're able, uh, within your own industry and within <coughs> your own environments, to provide that data set, you've got the opportunity for agile developers to make really cool stuff. So um, just wanted to be able to share that with you. So uh, next up, we have the SID show, I understand, yeah, yeah, as it's commonly again. known. So we've got four. <laughs> I'll jump in, in in between each, Yeah, yeah um, feel if free. that's helpful. So the first one is... Is, what do you want? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so this is a what do you want to watch? Um, this is a, a VOD uh, search engine, if you like. There's basically, again, there is no sing single place that you can go to. There's loads of stuff in the pipeline for, you've got uh, UView for where you can supposedly go to watch everything. In the UK, this is. Um, but there isn't anything yet that does it. So I created a simple service that, so let's say you wanted to search for Top Gear. Loads of people tweeting. Thanks, Martin. Uh, <laughs> so Top Gear goes away, searches iPlayer, searches Love Film, uh, searches basically everything that I wanted it to search. Did have YouTube, but there was far too much guff. Um, but then it also... Ah, only because you haven't, like, there's loads of unofficial stuff, and it, it was there for <laughs> literally the first results were some kids in their bedrooms. Um, there's loads of great material on YouTube, obviously. Uh, but then, uh, so... <laughs> I mean, this works with uh, <laughs> loads of stuff on 5OD, 5OD, uh, Demand 5 and 4OD, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, VOD, do you want to watch? Gosh, Stuart. Um, yeah, cool. Well, that's uh, this one. And then shall I move on to the next one? <laughs> Please get a big hand yeah. for VOD, do you want to watch? There are four. He's made four. Each one of those deserves a round of applause. So the next one that uh, <laughs> we're just <laughs> pulling up. In Sid, as you'll see that come up, is uh, Z-Box trending. All oh, right, okay. So this one, <laughs> uh, this one is simply a case of what are people watching right now, uh, and this uses it's using an undocumented uh, Z-Box API. So uh, yeah, uh, I managed to acquire access to some of their data, um, <laughs> but uh, this just literally shows you what people are watching right now um, with regards to when they check in. So you just saw it change just then. So we've now got 17% of people apparently watching Forever Young. Uh, interestingly, there was 18% earlier today watching Jeremy Kyle in the USA. So that's 18% of the people in the UK uh, probably should go and get a job. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that one is, uh, is uh, my Z-Box hack so that I can see what other people are watching so that I can then go off and view more information. BBC News and Weather, because I wanted to know more information about that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's my Z-Box trending. Thank you very much. A big hand for Z-Box trending. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Anthony Rose, who's still around, will have the opportunity to see that. Um, <laughs> so the next up we have, I believe, Recommender 2.0. Is that in your order of listings? Sid? Uh, uh, in case you're not sure what an API is, it's a way for us to gain access to data. So uh, it might be a simple... So with uh, TV, um, you send loads of data across with your broadcasts to the um, Freeview boxes or set-top boxes. But what an, an API is basically getting that data via the web or via some kind of... Uh, via the internet uh, in some way. So that's what an API is. I was asked to tell you what one was in case you didn't know. Sorry, I'm a geek. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is uh, Recommender 2.0 Beta. Want to know what film to watch? I went with the best name I could come up with that uh, oh was perfect. And uh, so now this is, again, it's a film recommendation. So let's say you wanted to watch uh, 
Let's say you like Pirates oh. of the Caribbean. I wonder what it might suggest. <laughs> uh, crap, I don't even know how to spell Caribbean. <laughs> Is that right? That's not what, even right. One R. One R. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> um, not very good at English. So that's what I leave the girlfriend to. She's an English teacher. Uh, so there we go. So it recommends other Pirates of the Caribbean. Let's say you want Superbad is the type of film you want. Uh, so Superbad, that will then recommend 40-Year-Old Virgin, Pineapple Express, <laughs> Super Troopers, Wayne's World, and Get Him to the Greek. I think, well, I'm a big Superbad fan, and I'm pretty certain I like or would like all of these programs, <laughs> uh, films. Um, but it does work with any film. And this is all, all of the stuff I've shown you so far, um, except for... Uh, Nudge Me uh, is available online uh, at siddev.com. Um, but yeah, so that one there is Recommender 2.0 Beta. A big hand, please. <laughs> and just one more late entry, I do believe, in the Sid Lawrence show um, is the multiplayer, uh, second screen multiplayer <coughs> quiz. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So this is, uh, they've got loads of... Um, TV quiz programs, and uh, you want to play along with them at the home. Uh, now, I've obviously spoofed. Oh, sweet. Um, you guys can also play along if you want. If you go to siddev.com forward slash quiz from either an iPhone or a BlackBerry or Firefox for Android, it uh, doesn't support yet the uh, Google uh, Android browser. Um, but if you go along to that, you should hopefully fingers cross. Oh, it's not going to work, is it? Aha, sweet. No, because I've changed network, so therefore you can't connect to my computer. Should have thought about that. <laughs> do you um, to right, uh, next one. Do you, yeah. you want to just talk, talk us, tell us what it was? Um, to okay, do? well, yeah, basically you can all, well, yeah. Um, you connect to it from your phone, and it's, it's instant feedback. So you press A, B, C, D, you get the players, you get scores. It's, um, but it was. The idea is that we, you could incorporate... You've got, in the UK, you've got a thing called the Million Pound Drop, and they've got a, place, a thing that you can play along at home, but you have to do it via a, a laptop or a desktop because it's in Flash. Um, and this was basically me proving that you could do it really quickly without it being in Flash. Um, so this I knocked up uh, this afternoon. Um, and it does work. We had five of us playing it earlier. Um, <laughs> but because uh, I've changed network and you connect to my laptop... Uh, just with the current setup. Um, so, uh, yeah, sweet, that worked really well. <laughs> I'm so pleased I spent this afternoon on it. <laughs> Whoop, next. <laughs> A huge hand. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sid. But actually, you know, you've built something in the course of not just 36 hours, just this afternoon that you wanted to be able to show. So, I mean, there's absolutely... I know, but it's fantastic that you made it and have been playing it on the boat. So this is this is live tech, and um, sometimes things don't always work out as well as we please. So we're going to take uh, not a five-minute break from proceedings, but I um, well, just while we have Dave Williamson set up, um, I'm going to just ask the judges if there's anything particular that they want to ask um, any of the developers who presented so far that just might help us just while we're setting up for about five minutes. Is that okay? Any burning questions? We have one from Joe. Joe, can you tell first of all yeah. who it might be addressed to? Uh, it's addressed to Sid. So I think two of your apps, uh, so your Remender 2.0 beta and also the uh, VOD do you want to watch? Uh, what do you want to watch? Um, they're kind of like what TiVo would do. So TiVo spent years doing this. You did it in uh, 24 hours or something? Uh, well, yeah. Is it <coughs> on? Yeah. 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 Um, then, yeah, 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 that's true, yeah. I guess. Yeah. OK. No, that's, that's interesting. Well, I, that well, I mean, I did it in less than 24 hours, because I did a few other hacks as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but so that was, <laughs> yes. So basically, if. TiVo disappears, we can still use your app to get oh, that It's data. online. It just uses all of the, the current websites as the data. I Basically, I scrape the sites. Because there's no APIs, because there's no data available, the only way to do it is for me to crawl through each site and check for the content. Um, and uh, So, yeah, that's online, and feel free to use that. I, I built them all. Basically, everything I built except for the quiz is to uh, it, uh, itch my, uh, scratch my own itch. Um, so uh, I will be leaving them online because I want to use them at home. So, uh, yeah, feel free to use them. Cool. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Does that answer your question, Joe? Yep, perfect. Uh, anything else for our panel of presenters? Hackers? 
you want to explain for the audience that aren't working in a technical field, scraping? Oh, well, scraping is simply getting the content of a website and then you go through it step by step and work out what the content is and if you need it and if you want to keep it and if you want to discard it. So um, you, and it, you pretend to be a user by getting the website and it, you just go through and find the bits that you want from it. Um, it's not ideal, uh, but in a case of no API and no data, it's the only way to really do it. And it's some of the work that you did live here to be able to make some of the apps that you had. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Theresa, you look yeah. perched on the end of your seat. Yeah, well, he's told me I have to stand up if I want to ask a question. So <laughs> I'm ask a question for you, Ira. Um, so how do you see... Um, I mean, I'm sure you've imagined the future of, of Grab Magic. So how do you see it evolving? What's the next step? Well, video. <laughs> um, <laughs> Obviously, but, but, but to well, do, what, what are people going to do with it? Well, I, I guess the, the key thing with it is um, removing the barrier between what you're trying to interact with. Because these, these things like remote controls, they're a third thing that you don't really need. Mm. You know, uh, Removing those barriers, making it much more natural that, so that you can interact with whatever it is you're watching um, or, or consuming um, or, or interacting with, of course, uh, directly. Um, and, and wherever we can reduce UI, wherever we can reduce complexity, we really should find ways of doing that. Because, you know, none of us really want to push a button. A button is just a means to an end. If we can get to that end without pushing a button, then that's, that's even nicer. I'd actually love to see what happens if you mash up yours and Sid's. That'd be kind of cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and thanks so much for bringing up the metadata problem again. I've been banging on about that for years. Oh, cool. <laughs> thanks very much, Ron. Philippe, is there anything you'd like to ask? No, no. Did we have a question from the audience just sat just behind? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll just, uh, if you just wait for the uh, microphone, Angela, I'll just bring that to you. Hey. Thanks, Tiffany. You're welcome. This question is uh, for Errol Bakken, and I guess generally for uh, all of the other developers, um, but particularly for Errol because you're into uh, interface design. Um, I know that when you're in the middle of developing a project, you start to think of ways um, that it can become infinitely more useful than when you started. So how do you, how do you prevent this kind of like itch to start adding things and adding things till infinity um, before, uh, before you actually produce something? Uh, and Aral, I'll just come back to you with a mic if that's okay. Thanks very much. Yeah, meet you halfway. <laughs> Thank you. Um, great question, thank you, and, and one that um, nearly every project faces, uh, like you were saying. There are several uh, facets to it. Number one, as a designer, your greatest asset is the ability to say no, not yes. Um, the, that's a simplistic answer, though, because most of the time, it's not because you have a bad designer on board or someone who doesn't understand interaction design. It is the structure of the organization itself that doesn't allow you to do this. So if an organization is design-led, then yes. Then that person can say no, and they have the authority to. If they don't have that authority, then even though they might know that, they're, that you're having feature creep or that, that you know, you're, you're losing the simplicity of whatever design you're working on, they may not have the authority to say that. And, and that's why a lot of organizations, um, because of their corporate cultures, because of their organizational structures, can't build usable or, or beautiful user experiences. Um, it's not just because of a designer and a team. That's very low level. The user experience happens at the top and it trickles down from the top. It never trickles up. Uh, did, did that answer your question? Oh, great, thank you. I'll just come back and grab that mic for you just while we're still setting up. We have the time for maybe one or two quick questions while Dave's setting up. Is there anything else, any burning questions people would like to ask? I'm sure there will be as it unfolds. Just checking behind me. I'm lost in the bright lights here. So just while we're setting up, um, uh, Rewired State are the largest independent uh, uh, developer network in the UK. Uh, what they have is around 600, uh, 600 developers who are able to then uh, gather together in terms of their skill sets to work on agile projects such as this. And I think we've got the go-ahead from uh, Dave Williamson, um, ready to go with... Um, Get back onto the right screen for you, Dave. There we go. Um, lazy shopper. Thank you very much. There you go. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> has actually been working on the UView project that uh, Sid mentioned, um, working on IPTV. So this this actually is based around um, 
not scratching my own itch, to use the term, but um, after a discussion with my wife, she's the main TV watcher, um, so when she gets the chance with our two children. So this is actually um, solving, in my mind, one of the problems she has, which is by the time she wants to sit down and watch TV, that's all she wants to do. She doesn't want to um, follow Twitter, Facebook and everything else. She just wants to watch TV. Although, it would be quite handy if the TV ordered her shopping for her. So this is showing how we can do that, hopefully. Um, so the idea here is uh, the content she's watching on screen. Uh, from an internet connected TV is able to use the IP connection to feedback to uh, a server and a service that uh, will allow her to collect data from the show she is watching. Um, so here she's being warned or, or told that uh, the program has that ab ability um, and she should prepare her second device which you can see on the screen over here. So in this case I'm using a, a tablet um, she gets sent a code so that the TV is able to actually um, communicate with the port, uh, the second screen. And assuming I get this right, I didn't actually think to prepare a more easy to enter code. Obviously, <laughs> could have. Bear with me here. <laughs> This is then sending that code back over to the TV uh, through the cloud. Um, and now she's just watching TV. Meanwhile, on the second screen, um, what we're going to see is once she hits an area of content that has been populated with, con uh, with keywords, her second screen is collecting that information ready for her to send straight to the shops to be delivered when she cooks it for me and I get back, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> in my dreams. And that's uh, Lazy Shopper, essentially. Um, shopping without having to do anything other than watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, Dave. Thank you very much. Many, uh, many of the hacks are inspired by need and driven by need, as you'll um, see from some of the executions uh, that have come up here today. <coughs> Just while we're uh, swapping over on tech, we have next Russell Smith joining us um, with uh, the app Watched that he's been sharing with us. Russell's at UKD1 on Twitter for all of those who are tweeting about it um, and provides uh, consultancy to uh, startups for development and apps. You ready to go? Um, yep. Just pulling off. Your mic's there on the lectern for you. Thank you. Hello, guys. Um, I'm quite passionate about um, analytics. And from what I've seen, there's not that much analytics about what people have watched and what specific parts of shows they like. So my hack is around that. So what I've done is I've made a system which um, pulls in tweets and uh, works out who's, influence, uh, who's got influence around a show and who's tweeting about it. So when you um, play back a clip in, your, in the system, um, it will go through the tweets that are happening about it and draw a graph, which is going wrong. Oh, no, it's just mm -hmm. catching up. So we'll draw a graph um, about the tweets. So, yeah. Basically, the aim is for, to allow um, brands to work out who are the, the most influential people and who to engage with um, based around what's going on on the social internet. So, and that's my hack. Very clean, very clear, very simple, but very effective. We've got some great um, analytics being presented uh, that will be practical and useful in 36 hours. Thank you very much, Russell. Thank you. So next up, we, uh, next up we have a... Uh, uh, I was just checking whether it was a single or a group. It's just yourself, John. Is that right? Uh, no. No? It's jo John and Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence Job, John Lyons... Um, with the app Relive TV. Relive TV. 
Relive TV. Relive TV. I'll just come around the other side. Do you need two mics, boys? No. Okay. Over to you. Feedback. Would have been good if it was feedback then. <laughs> <laughs> this idea came about um, uh, giving you more feedback on people watching shows. Um, so the app gives people a way to constantly rate the show as it's going on. Live TV, YouTube videos, any sort of show. Um, it also lets people... Uh, Gives people a chance to interact with others during TV shows and interact with others who've watched the TV show earlier. Um, can be built into a website, iPad, iPhone or Android app. Uh, we've actually built it into an iPhone app and I'm going to try and demo that for you now. Yeah, sorry, it doesn't look that great, but... Here's the iPad app and you start it, pick your TV show, we picked one. Um, and you can see here, the TV show, this is from a YouTube video, so um, you can see how people have rated the TV show over time. Um, and you can see messages that people have left about different moments in the show. Uh, and on this side, you, you can change your rating, so if, if you really don't like this bit, Uh, this information gets sent to the server and then averaged out and you can leave a tweet, uh, a message, sorry. Um, and that is hard-coded to the time in the TV show, so somebody watching this back later will get that message appear at the same time so you can talk about a particular scene. That is ReLive TV. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we've just had uh, two more hacks within our time, but also I've been reliably informed that Sid uh, Lawrence has changed his network. Um, so we will be able to see <laughs> the yes. second screen multiplayer quiz very, very, very briefly at the end. We might not go into full audience voting. We don't want the judges to be swayed too much. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I'd um, love you to be able to demo it. So um, just... Uh, it, it, it's your very good selves again over to the next app. Yes, so. it is. <laughs> so now we have uh, John Lyons and Lawrence Job on Deaf TV. Sure. Uh, Deaf TV. This app is about enhancing the viewing experience for deaf people. Um, you pick your TV show, then the app looks in the closed captioning text for certain keywords like boom or phone ring and vibrates your device to, to match what's happening on TV. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try and run a demo now. Um, so on this screen, we have an iPhone device. Uh, and we're going to watch a scene from Sherlock Holmes and start it at the same time, approximately. Uh, <laughs> yep. So that vibrated <laughs> at the right time. You're going to have to take my word for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> <It did. laughs> so that was an explosion. Um. And when the telephone rings, the phone actually rings as well. So... <laughs> That's something I just worked on in the last, or we worked on in the last couple of hours. So, thank you. Thanks very much, John. So, the last hack that we have is called Feedback, which uh, Lawrence Job is just setting up now for us. 
um, just while Lawrence pl plugs in, and then we'll see Sid, and that'll be at the close of the show and tell. Uh, for all of you uh, online, you're able to look at all of these hacks on uh, rewiredstate.org forward slash MIP boat hack, and we'll also be tweeting that out on the MIP cube hashtag as well. For those of you who want to look at these in more detail, who are the guys working on them and where that resource is. So um, I'll let uh, Lawrence continue as when you're ready, Lawrence. Okay. Hi. Hang on. Okay, this is a spin-off from a few other ideas that I've seen today. Um, and it's something I've thought about for a while, but I just assumed existed. But as far as I can tell, it doesn't. So here it is. The problem is that, as far as I can tell, data collected when watching uh, videos online is not granular enough when watching. I said that already. <laughs> <laughs> um, JavaScript and Flash generate a huge number of events. That's the coding language that most video websites use. Uh, generate a huge number of events that aren't usually useful unless you collect them in volume. The fix is to listen for these usually ignored events, which allows for very detailed usage patterns to be connected, uh, collected. The typical events that are fired that are completely missed, unless you're in maybe YouTube or some, someone who's got enough time to invest quite a lot of time in analytics software, um, are buffering, which is where you're watching something and it skips and it holds or it hangs. Uh, which is indicative of technical or infrastructure problems, or just that your users don't have a broadband connection sufficient to watch your media, which is useful to know. Um, or if someone's watching a video one minute in and thinks, maybe this isn't the right bit for me and I want to see something later on, if they skip forward, most of the time that information isn't collected. Um, again, with pausing and leaving the page, um, that information generally isn't collected, and it's highly useful because then you can evaluate at what point a user leaves your video. All of these are generally ignored unless you have in huge analytics software. There's no third-party service that I could find. If it exists, then I'll look very stupid. Um, and it's critical for audience retention and improving the content as you go. And of course, that data in the prototype I've made is collected in real time. So you can analyze it very precisely. Unfortunately, the demo does work, but isn't pretty enough to justify showing it to you. It's essentially a printout of a database that shows that someone's paused the video at this point. Uh, perhaps tomorrow, if someone wants to work with me to get, their, get it installed on their video, I could have some uh, analytics to upload and interesting reports to show. Um, but aside from that, this is feedback, my hack. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lawrence. And it's not always easy to show hacks that are very useful and practical, particularly in a 36-hour build. Those of you who have had the great pleasure to attend hack days before, I'm sure will uh, recognize and see that, but very useful to be able to take us through those steps. So we're going to have uh, Sid back just on uh, being able to uh, show us quickly this second screen multiplayer quiz. Uh, yeah, you may remember me from such hacks as Vod. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, if anyone fancies playing this quiz, um, then you, or if you go to siddev.com forward slash quiz from an iPhone, Blackberry, or Firefox or Android, um, you'll Wait, be able to it connect. Uh, siddev, S Y D D E V dot com forward slash quiz. You'll see it at the top there. I'm on it. Um, now, this is a fastest finger first. Uh, as soon as someone gets, if you guess wrong, then uh, it, you can't answer again. And uh, if you guess right, uh, then it all skips for all of you straight to the next question. Um, or oh, someone's already got it right. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, Sid is the best hacker. That's what I put down. Um, now, uh, uh, what's the best TV program of all time? Uh, uh, what is the most amount of lols? Mega lols, massive lols, uber lols, or troller lols? Anyone? Anyone know the answer to that one? Russell is cool so far, has got 100. No, no one, no one's getting, no one's answering. Everyone's got it wrong. Everyone has it wrong, and it's the last question, so therefore uh, uh, it just breaks at that point. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> By the way, um, with regards to the metadata stuff, 
Uh, radio is so far ahead of TV. Yes. Um, and uh, if you work in TV and you're to do with the data, um, yeah, just think that radio's beating you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that. And for all of the hacks that we've seen here today. An incredible amount of work and display and elegant execution. Don't let that last one affect you too much in the voting and hearing the audience perspective. <laughs> and that's not what it was for. It was just to be able to share with you uh, the work that the guys did today. So our, from here on in, I'm just about to uh, say our thanks and close. So our judges will go away and collaborate um, and uh, work together and to be able to share the winning hack at the end of uh, today, it, which will be uh, announced and presented in the Hotel Martinez uh, evening soiree, I do believe. But I just wanted to be able to uh, say that look at what these guys built in 36 hours. I think you'll all join me in uh, saying what an incredible opportunity and achievement. So a really big hand to all of them all together, please. <laughs> And if this is what they can build in just 36 hours, if there's two messages that I can have you to take away from uh, the hack part of the event today is free your data, release your data, make an effort to get your data in order so that smart, clever engineers and prototypes can build really useful, sophisticated things for you. And and <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly coming. But also, those of you who have the opportunity to invest in uh, engineers, prototype developments, hack days, to be able to work with your innovations teams, to be able to uh, take collaborative work with both with your developers within your business and external developers and collaborators and partners to create interesting and useful things. So um, I just wanted to be able to share that with you. I want to say an absolute huge thank you for Reed Medem for supporting Rewired state to uh, allow us to have the beautiful hack day we've had on the most beautiful boat. So can I just say thanks to Reed Midden, that's been so amazing of them, to allow us to share that with you today. So a huge thanks and a huge thanks for uh, the devs for coming down uh, and uh, working so hard and through the night. That's plenty for me today. We're rewired state. Um, we're around this evening if you'd like to be able to talk to us. If you've been taking any photography, do please also hashtag it MIPBoatHack as well as MIPCube. Um, we'll be looking at some of the analytics and pulling it all back into our blog posts and pieces on rewiredstate.org. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what a better way to finish MIPCube. So this is the end of our formal kind of conferences, and I can't think of a better way. Thank you to all the hackers, really. You do make us kind of dream of a new world where data would be openly shared and we could do magical things with it. Um, please don't miss the party tonight. Uh, the creative party is at the... It was right there uh, at the Martinez. No, I'm going to get that wrong. The Martinez, yes it is. At 7.30, we'll be rewarding and unveiling all the winners of all the competitions. So let's go show them our support and, of course, our uh, hack winner. Um, and just thank you to absolutely everybody that attended MIPQ over the last two days. If I could describe one thing, it's been really about a community coming together whether they were on a boat or whether they were in the rooms here, you've really made us feel part of, of building something that was more than a two-day event, but of a community. I hope you'll continue that community throughout the year uh, by all interacting with each other, doing fantastic business together, doing marvelous hacks. And so just a big thank you from me also to my marvelous team, Sarah, Ben, and everybody else that's made this happen. Olivier, thank you very much. They've been working so hard um, for the last six months on making this happen. So a big round of applause for them, please.